Welcome. At this time, we'll have Father Jerry, if you wish to participate with the invocation. Heavenly and gracious Father, we thank you for the many gifts that you have bestowed upon us. We come to recognize in our lives the gifts and how we take these gifts and we share them with one another. We thank you for the many blessings that you have given to these students of the class of 2018. The blessings that their parents and their teachers and their families and friends have shared with them. We ask that you continue to bless them as they go out into the world to bring love to one another. We ask this in all things to your Son, Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Good afternoon. On behalf of us, the Ottaville Senior Class of 2018, I would like to welcome you to our commencement ceremony. Family, friends, Father Jerry, faculty, administration, and school board members, my classmates and I graciously thank you for joining us today. We wouldn't have been able to make it through the past 13 years without all of you. Today, as we, the class of 2018, stand before you one last time, we can't help but reminisce on our time here at Ottaville. It seems like just yesterday we were in elementary looking up to the big kids and wondering when it was going to be our turn. We were always told to live in the moment and our time would eventually come. However, we still spent a lot of our time counting, counting the minutes until lunchtime, the days until the weekend, the number of assignments we had left to do for the week, and counting the days until graduation. Now our turn is finally up, and we realize that the upper class before us were right. It did go by faster than we thought. Once my classmates and I leave here today, we will be making our first steps into our next journey in life. Today, we are all experiencing a variety of emotions, from excitement to finally being here, to pride in our accomplishments, to sadness for having to move on, and a little fearful for the future. Even though this is an end to our journey here at Ottaville, it is the beginning of another journey elsewhere. We are going our separate ways, but this school and community binds us forever. I think we are all a bit nervous about how life is going to change after high school, but as Gail Sheehy once said, if we don't change, we don't grow. If we don't grow, we aren't really living. So I encourage myself and the rest of my class to embrace this change and step into our lives without hesitation. Once again, my classmates and I welcome you to our commencement ceremony, and thank you for all of the love, support, and guidance you have given us along the way. It's a privilege to be up here speaking on behalf of our class with my best friend. But let's be honest, whose idea was it to put the two worst public speakers up here at the same time? <laughs> let's see how this goes. They weren't kidding when they said time flies when you're having fun. Today is bittersweet to say the least. Before we part ways, we'd like to reminisce on the lasting memories we have made together as the class of 2018. The journey began in kindergarten when Ryan was the first to not follow directions. He was specifically told not to take the red cap off the glue bottle, but he decided to anyways. Let's just say glue was everywhere and Mrs. Rellinger wasn't too happy. While most of us try to stay on task, Carrie thought it'd be a good idea to cut a big long curl from her hair and hide it in her pencil pouch. Then there was the time Beth was too eager to finish her snack first and tripped on a chair and spilled milk in her hair. Even in kindergarten, Brendan Siefker wanted to be a dentist. I guess if it's meant to be, it'll be. This was also the year Logan and Derek got a new puppy, and everyone knew because Derek always came to school with dog poop on his shoes. <laughs> I 
You're good. Okay. When Madison moved here in first grade, she definitely made a not so good first impression. Not only did she slap Nick in the face just because she felt like it, but she also got a note sent home to Mrs. M. Every morning, Brittany Schleter felt the need to come into class and tell Mrs. Horseman about her new rock discovery. Her interest in science followed her to senior year when she got a perfect score at the state science fair. Moving to second grade, Zane thought it'd be a good idea to leave his mark by carving his name into Mrs. Burt's art table. She recalls him being the first student ever to mark on the table, so congratulations, Zane. <laughs> One thing we looked forward to every Valentine's Day was Andy's grandma cinnamon hearts. Even back then, Andy knew the way to a girl's heart. In third grade, Mrs. Edelbrock caught several students squinting to see the board. In fact, only one kid started the year with glasses, and by the end, six of us had them. I don't think we'll forget the time Mrs. Hahnemann was on the phone arguing with the phonics book company for literally two hours because something was wrong in the text. Megan's mom received a call from school one day because her face had swelled up from poison ivy. It wasn't one of her best looking days, to say the least. Fourth grade was a big year for us. We did our best to keep Mrs. Cyber on her toes at all times. Brittany Winover cried several times throughout the year. For example, she cried when we took cover for a tornado because her mom was home sleeping and she didn't think she'd hear the sirens. <laughs> then she cried all morning when Mrs. Seibert made her rewrite her entire spelling paper because it wasn't in her best handwriting. Then you have Brittany Schleter, who forgot to put her name on everything. She had to write it over a thousand times, in cursive, but Mrs. Cyber eventually gave her a break. In fourth grade, Derek got the nickname Bird Boy because he used to sit perched up like a bird on his chair. Another time was when Mrs. Cyber had to cover the clock with paper because Keegan wouldn't stop looking at it. Let's not forget when Josh's appendix burst in the closet while playing the role of the rat goblin. <laughs> By the end of the year, Zane was on Mrs. Seibert's last nerves. She told him she was going to write a series of books called Zane the Pain. <laughs> <laughs> Moving to fifth grade, our honorary student, Jaden Schnipke, knocked Kara off the swings when he hit her with a kickball. Connor also decided to leave his mark when he finally admitted to writing on the gym floor with Sharpie after all the boys were held in the office on the last day of school. <laughs> because this is a school function, I'll let it up to you to imagine what he wrote. Finally, we made it to the high school end. Sixth, seventh, and eighth grade was a big change for us. One time, Troy wasn't thinking, shocker, <laughs> and called Mrs. Nussbaum mom by accident. To this day, she hasn't let it go. Speaking of Mrs. Nussbaum, we can't about forget about the time John tripped over his desk and hit his head on the concrete wall. We later found out that he suffered from a minor concussion. This was only the start to his many head injuries. We were Mrs. Wary's first eighth grade class. The best time was when a mouse ran across the floor and she jumped up on a chair and screamed for Mr. Martz next door. He and Josh saved the day and trapped it. Let's just say, after Mrs. Wary's eventful day, she couldn't sleep that night. Then came high school, where we slowly outgrew some of the awkwardness and immaturity. Well, maybe not all of us. Starting off freshman year, the first year of French class, Connor sat in the back of the room with a box over his head and was throwing paper. Madame asked him what in the world he was doing, and he said, I'm a printer. After that, she quit questioning Connor's weird sense of humor. <laughs> this was also the year we started having to complete state requirements in gym class. For instance, we had to do just seven push-ups. Leave it to Brittany Winover and Caitlin to fail epically and not even be able to do one. <laughs> we were soon to find out that you couldn't get away with just one answer in English class because Ms. Nodell always came back with, how come? Then their sophomore year, the time where most of us were starting to get our driver's license. One eventful encounter was when Brianna hit someone in the parking lot and her bumper fell off. 
Then there was the time Jessica Cavledge got pulled over for speeding in the parking lot and was late to volleyball practice. <laughs> Another thing was the girls hated playing hockey and gym because of the boys, especially Troy. He was known for swinging too high and April just wasn't having it one day when she got hit in the ankle with the puck like 50 times. I've never seen her so angry. Sophomore year was also the year when Megan and Troy started making faces at each other. One time they got caught airdropping notes back and forth on their iPads and Mr. O tried to send Troy to the office, but Megan stood up for him. Mrs. Jones was in for a treat this year. Trenton was always so eager to read that she always called on him. For some of us, junior year was a constant study session with hours of homework each night. I'm glad our other classmates still managed to find some joy during the school year. The boys used to zip tie people's book bags to the legs of the desk. Madison was the easiest target. <laughs> Ryan put on a show once when he walked into our English class wearing a trench coat and hat. He had come for his belongings. But before he left, the boys in the class stood up on the desk one by one repeating, Oh, Captain, my Captain. <laughs> you should have seen the look on Mr. Nodell's face. I don't think any of us made it through one of Mr. O's classes without hearing quiet kids or something being obliterated. <laughs> the most iconic memory we have of junior year was when the whole class wore Hawaiian shirts for picture day. Mr. Turbin was the only one who didn't get the memo that day. He also didn't get the memo to smile, but maybe next year. Before we knew it, it was senior year, a year full of laughs for us as classmates. Mr. Blake said once we were seniors, he'd tell us who the Cocoa Puff kid from the bus was. We all thought it was Amber, then came to find out it was actually McKenna. Once again, the girls basketball team finished their tournament run down in Columbus. The whole community was there to cheer them on. They came home as state runner-up. Speaking of our accomplishments, Brendan Seifkert was the first in our area to be one of the top five to win the Wendy's Heisman Scholarship. The New York trip was definitely a different experience for us. You'd think we never left Putnam County considering we got stuck in traffic because of a snowstorm next to a trailer full of squealing pigs <laughs> for four hours. This wasn't our last encounter with animals. When we were at the Statue of Liberty, a group of us were walking and Derek barked at a flock of geese. And they all took off over our heads. And somehow, we all managed to dodge the poop. We definitely knew how to get the New Yorkers' attention when Troy, Logan, Andy, and Derek would make chicken and goat noises every time they walked by. We were definitely Mr. Verhoff's favorite calculus class. Almost every day, there was a discussion about food, volleyball, or boyfriends. You should have seen the look on his face when Caria brought in Fazoli's breadsticks. Pretty sure we were the class to mail it in the earliest. One thing we learned for sure this year is, if you do something stupid, something stupid's gonna happen to you. Right, Zane? After 13 years, we are left with memories and friendships that we will cherish forever. As we stand here before you now, ready to graduate, we look forward to what the future will hold for us. I know this farewell ending is more of a see you later. We came here as strangers, we leave as friends, and we are left with memories that will never end. As Josh would say, good luck everyone.
From a young age, we have been taught to look to the future to determine a path for our lives. However, as this path becomes more of a reality, I'm not quite sure we are all ready. First of all, if we are stuck in the wild with only a pocket knife, none of, us, none of us would be able to survive because we wouldn't have a cell phone. Secondly, if our car broke down, there would be a very limited number of my peers that would actually know what was wrong with the car. However, there is one thing I do know for certain. We all know the formula for a quadratic equation. For 2,048 days out of the past 13 years, we, as the class of 2018, have been on a journey to discover the path for our future lives. Before you today, there are 40 graduates who are eager but naive about what lies before us. Some of us have hopes of becoming future nurses, teachers, computer science experts, doctors, engineers, therapists, businessmen, or entering the workforce. Although this is a wide range of occupations, there is one similarity between us all. We all have a path for our future. At times, the journey to discover our path has not been the easiest. As Megan and Bethany mentioned, there have been a lot of learning experiences along the way. On top of all of our memories, there have been times when we've woken up a little too early, faced some teenage drama, went through some difficult bodily changes, ate some questionable lunches, and literally broke down in tears because we thought we couldn't take it anymore. But as Hannah Montana once said, everybody has those days. However, we managed to survive these times and sit before you today as the class of 2018. As we reminisce on all the times we have had together, it is bittersweet to realize that today, as we move our tassels from the right to the left, we are closing this chapter of our lives at Audeville High School and starting our journey on the paths we have chosen. Today is the last day we will walk these halls as the class of 2018. Today is the last day we will sit in the gymnasium as high school students. Today, sadly, could also be the last time some of us will ever see each other again. Although today may be the end of our path to graduation, it brings forth the possibilities all of our individual paths have to offer. For our own class motto states that our paths may change as life goes along, but the bonds re between us remain ever strong. Let us never forget the bond we have as the class of 2018. The future is uncertain, but during the hard times, remember that everyone here today is here to support the class of 2018 as we face our future dreams, ambitions, and aspirations down the path we choose. The journey down our path will not be easy. No one ever said it would. But like we have done in the past, learn from our mistakes and grow from our failures. A wise person once said, you'll never be brave if you don't get hurt. You'll never learn if you don't make mistakes. You'll never be successful if you don't encounter a failure. Over the past four years, the halls, classrooms, teachers, and administration have provided us with a wealth of opportunities to push our limits, be brave, and learn from our mistakes. Once we walk out of the doors of Ottawa High School today, never forget where our path started. If we utilize the skills we have learned over the past 13 years, the future for the class of 2018 is very bright. In closing, I would like to wish the best of luck to you, my classmates, my friends, as we proceed down the path for our future we have chosen. Thank you for the past 13 years and the bond we always share. Without each and every one of you, we would not be the class of 2018. Today, as we finally gather for graduation, it seems like many things are coming to an end. Over these past couple of months, my classmates and I have experienced several lasts. Our last high school dance, our last sporting events, our last musical or band concert, but most importantly, our last day of being in high school together. Although this may be hard for some of us to fathom, it's important that we understand this is only the beginning. 
We have finally reached the point in our lives where we can go out, face the world, and accomplish our goals. Sure, most of us will choose different paths, whether it be the workforce, military, or attending college. However, one thing will stay the same. We'll always be part of the class of 2018, and we'll always share a bond with one another. Our class has gone through good times, bad times, and a whole lot of fun times. You could say these experiences over the past 13 years have brought us close together. I'm glad to be a part of this tight-knit group, and I'm confident we'll remain this way regardless of which direction our paths take us. Throughout high school, Mr. Nodell would always say, it's a people world. I never thought too deeply about this until I began reflecting on our time in high school. I realized that for us, especially coming from Audeville, this saying couldn't be more accurate. The people we've been involved with and the relationships we've formed over the last 13 years have been all about. Starting with our parents and families. We appreciate you, sorry. We appreciate you giving us endless opportunities, guidance, and continuous support. To our teachers and coaches, thank you for pushing us, preparing us, displaying patience, know it's tough sometimes, and most importantly, showing us that we can accomplish great things when we put forth our best efforts. To our community, thank you for providing us with resources and a safe and supportive place to grow and learn. And finally, to the class of 2018, we probably won't remember all the algebra equations, English grammar rules, or what the 22nd Amendment is. We will always remember each other and the great memories we've shared together. Although our times at Audeville High School is over, our ties to each other aren't. This is simply because it's a people world. Going forward, I'd like to wish my classmates the best of luck as we prepare for and begin our journeys into the world. We'll see new places, meet new people, and learn new things. But I hope we always remember to hold on to the valuable lessons we've learned at Audeville High School. Work hard, have fun, be happy, and never forget where you came from. Thank you, Father Jerry, and graduation speakers. The administration and faculty will now recognize individual members of the National Honor Society. These graduates are designated honor graduates. Will the following graduates please stand and remain standing until everyone is called? Please hold your applause until everyone is recognized. Megan Bergai, McKenna Byrne, Abigail Hilvers, April Horseman, C.J. Kemper, Caitlin Kelch, Bridget Landon, Emily Landon, Kara Landon, Julia Langhouse, Bethany Mag, Amber Miller, Michaela Miller, Josh Sarka, Clayton Schnipke, Brittany Schleter, Lindsay Schweller, Brendan Siefker, Brendan Stoner, Nicole Williams. The members of the National Technical Honor Society are Clayton Schnipke and Jessica Schnipke. And the red cords that Abby has on designates a American Red Cross Award. So congratulations to honor graduates and National Technological Society graduates. <laughs> Administration and faculty will now recognize individual members who will receive an honors diploma from the state of Ohio. Once again, please stand, remain standing, and let's hold our applause until all are recognized. Megan Bergai, McKenna Byrne, Abby Hilvers, C.J. Kemper, Carrie Ladd, Bridget Landon, Emily Landon, 
Kara Landon, Julia Langhouse, Bethany Mag, Amber Miller, Michaela Miller, Josh Sarka, Brittany Schleter, Lindsay Schweller, Brendan Siefker, Brendan Stoner, Nicole Williams. Congratulations on your honors diploma. Good afternoon. At this time, it is my privilege to recognize the academic achievements of the class of 2018 graduates. Students, please stand as your name is called, and if we could please hold our applause till the end, that'd be greatly appreciated. Kimberly Elise Baker, daughter of Eric Heinisher, attending the University of Toledo, recipient of the UT Rocket Award. Evan Becker, son of Rick and Holly Becker, attending the University of Toledo, recipient of the UT Trustee Scholarship. Megan Bergai, daughter of Gary and Karen Bergai, attending the University of St. Francis, recipient of the USF Grant Harder and Sheer Funeral Home Scholarship. McKenna Byrne, daughter of Kent Byrne and Sherry Sheridan, attending Heidelberg University, recipient of the Heidelberg Dean Scholarship and the Ottaville Staff Scholarship. Connor Fanning, son of David Fanning and Shelley Fanning, attending the University of Toledo, recipient of the UT Rocket Award. Abigail Hilvers, daughter of Steve and Rhonda Hilvers, attending The Ohio State University, recipient of the Paulding Putnam Electric Cooperative Scholarship, the Ottaville Mutual Telephone Company Scholarship, Ottaville Lady Yacht Scholarship, and the Ottaville Lions Scholarship. April Horseman, daughter of Dan and Lynn Horseman, attending James A. Rhodes State College, recipient of the Rhodes CCP Scholarship and the Rhodes State Endowment Scholarship. Caitlin Kelch, daughter of Joe and Renee Kelch, attending Lord's University, recipient of the Lord's Dean Scholarship, Corral Music Award, and the Lord's Campus Ministry Scholarship. Cassandra Kemper, daughter of Dave and Judy Kemper, attending The Ohio State University, recipient of the Alex and Jenny Miller Memorial Scholarship, Catholic Ladies of Columbia Scholarship, Jacob Guy Memorial Scholarship, Ohio Fraternal Alliance Scholarship, and Student Success Scholarship. Derek Kemper, son of Kevin and Stacy Kemper, attending James A. Rhodes State College through the Grove Apprentice Program, recipient of the Award of Distinction in Electricity. Logan Kemper, son of Stacy, excuse me, Kevin and Stacy Kemper, attending James A. Rhodes State College through the Grove Apprentice Program. Jonathan Knippen, son of Travis and Dina Knippen, attending the University of Toledo, recipient of the UT Trustee Scholarship. Carrie Ladd, daughter of Barry Ladd and Karen Ladd, attending Kent State University, recipient of the Kent State Scholarship and the OTEC Communications Scholarship. Bridget Landon, daughter of Dan and Beth Landon, attending the University of Finley, recipient of the UF Founder Scholarship, UF President Scholarship, and Women's Athletic Basketball Scholarship. Emily Landon, daughter of Mike and Becky Landon, attending The Ohio State University, recipient of the Ohio JCI Senate Charitable and Educational Foundation Scholarship, OTEC Communication Scholarship, Ottaville Lady Yacht Scholarship, and Student Success Scholarship. Kara Landon, daughter of Kevin and Amy Landon, attending Bowling Green State University, recipient of the Central Insurance Educational and Charitable Foundation Scholarship, University Freshman Academic Scholarship, and the Ottawa Mutual Telephone Company Scholarship. Julia Langhouse, daughter of Tony and Tricia Langhouse, attending Miami University, recipient of the St. Rita's Volunteer Scholarship. Keegan Lease, son of Darren and Amanda Lease, attending the Bowling Green State University, recipient of the Jacob Guy Memorial Scholarship. Bethany Mag, daughter of Tim and Mary Jo Mag, attending the University of Toledo, recipient of the UT Rocket Award, Toledo Excellence Scholarship, Medical Mutual Scholarship, and the OTEC Communication Scholarship. Zane Martin, son of Blaine and Amy Martin, attending Bluffton University, recipient of the Bluffton Trustee Scholarship. Michaela Miller, daughter of Todd and Elaine Miller, attending University of Toledo, 
recipient of the UT Regent Scholarship, UT Rocket Award, UT Sibling Scholarship, and the William D. Squires Educational Foundation Scholarship. Joshua Sarka, son of John and Cassie Sarka, attending the University of Toledo, recipient of the UT Regent Scholarship. Andy Schimler, son of Darren and Julie Schimler, attending the University of Toledo, recipient of the UT Godfrey Scholarship, UT Briar Sibling Scholarship, UT Legacy Award, UT Trustee Scholarship, and the UT Rocket Award. Brittany Schleter, daughter of Kevin and Lori Schleter, attending the Ohio State University, recipient of the Osborne Family Scholarship, OSU First Choice Merit Scholarship, Richard T. Gosser Scholarship, and First Place Future Physician Ohio State University State Science Day Award. Clayton Snipke, son of Chris and Teresa Snipke, entering the workforce, recipient of the Award of Distinction in Industrial Mechanics and the Kennedy Manufacturing Gift. Jessica Snipke, daughter of Matthew and Jennifer Snipke, attending Bowling Green State University, recipient of the Ottaville Area Community Club Scholarship. Madison Snipke, daughter of Gary and Cynthia Snipke, attending Kent State University, recipient of the Kent State Opportunity Grant. Lindsay Schweller, daughter of Jim and Bev Schweller, attending the University of Toledo, recipient of the Toledo Trustee Award. Brendan Siefker, son of Dr. Tom and Cheryl Siefker, attending the Ohio State University, recipient of the Ohio State University Provost Scholarship, the Ohio State University Alumni Scholars Program, the Ottaville Mutual Telephone Company Scholarship, and the Wendy's High School Heisman. Brendan Stoner, son of Rod Stoner and Sonia Stoner, attending the University of Toledo, recipient of the UT Regents Scholarship. Troy Warnicke, son of Terry and Jan Warnicke, entering the workforce, is the recipient of the Marcus Landon Memorial Gift. Nicole Williams, daughter of Dan and Sue Williams, attending the University of Toledo, recipient of the UT Trustee Scholarship and UT Alumni Scholarship. Brittany Winover, daughter of John and Tammy Winover, attending the University of Toledo, recipient of the UT Rocket Award. Total scholarships earned by the class of 2018 is $856,100. Congratulations, graduates, and best of luck in your future endeavors. Before we get started with the reason that uh, everyone came here to award a diploma, we do have a staff member that is retiring this year, and after numerous years, we'll just leave it at that amount. Um, Mrs. Thomas, helping set up with this event, homecoming, NHS for numerous years, cancer walk for the last how many years, food drive and our, our local food pantry is over at Continental. They call every year. Still gonna do that because they rely on our community membership between the Boy Scouts and the church and what we do here at school. Uh, they rely on that heavily for the year. Um, I know, Mrs. Thomas, I'm gonna miss something. Maybe Connor can spit it out in his printer <laughs> and we'll remember it, but I uh, wanted to recognize you. If this class is leaving, Mrs. Thomas says, I'm out of here too. So. Congratulations, Mrs. Thomas. <laughs> Megan, is it time to smile yet? Okay, good. Okay. Staff and administration now certifies that all seniors receiving a diploma have met all requirements from the Ottaville Board of Education and the State Department of Education. Kimberly Elise Baker. Ryan James Bendeley. Evan R. Becker. <laughs> B. 
Brianna Lynn Bowersox. Megan Elizabeth Bergai. McKenna Rose Byrne. Jessica Michelle Cavillage. Connor J. Fanning. Abigail Marie Hilvers. April Danielle Horseman. Caitlin Renee Kelch. Cassandra Jean Kemper. Derek Joseph Kemper. Logan John Kemper. Jonathan Knippen. Carrie Alexis Ladd. Bridget Marie Landon. Emily K. Landon. Kara Elizabeth Landon. Julia Marie Langhouse. Keegan Darren Lease. Bethany Rose Mag. Zane Leroy Martin. Amber Elizabeth Miller. Michaela Ann Miller. Nicholas R. Mormon. Caitlin Nicole Roby. Joshua Sarka. Andy J. Schimler. Brittany Ann Schleter. Clayton C. Schnipke. Jessica Marie Schnipke. Madison K. Schnipke. Lindsay Ann Schweller. (laughs) 
Brendan T. Siefker. Brendan Paul Stoner. Troy A. Warnicky. Nicole Marie Williams. Brittany Lynn Winover. Trenton J. Zacharich. Before Michaela comes up, every year Ruth and I go through and how are we going to replace? How are we going to replace? They replace some people. Um, where's Mrs. Hickey at? What, over $15,000 for the cancer walk? Food drive was better than ever. Toys for Tots, better than ever. Um, and if you were here this winter at some point in time, you saw the involvement, not only this winter, but this past fall and then this spring as well. Class was involved. And congratulations to you folks out there for keeping them involved because that's what makes things happen in a community. So congratulations to the class of 2018 to make our community better and whatever community you decide to reside in. Thank you. Okay, Michaela. Michaela Miller, senior class president, will perform this ceremonial shifting of the tassel. So if class of 18, if you would stand up, please. Using your left hand, move the tassel from right to left. Elise, whenever you're ready, if you would just sit still for a second, Elise is going to take off. Elise, go ahead, lead them out, and they'll be right back in over here so that we can form a line and congratulate everyone. You might want to take your stuff with you. <laughs> 